Reno Black, ladies and gentlemen, more raw data. Now, if you know the temperature of most of the supergiants and also the sun, then you know the whole data in truth right here because this is the solar wind ion temperature. Okay, and they're not lying to you about that. That's straight up that many degrees Celsius above and that many degrees hot. 25,400 Kelvin. Now, I'm just going to tell you ballpark wise that the sun is like 4,500 or something like that, or 40. 4,000 something hundred Kelvin. So when I show you all those photos, you know I'm telling you the truth about super giants and so forth and so on because that's the temperature of the solar wind out there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Combined, yes. When we get that solar heat, we are getting it a lot. Okay? Now, to put some ice cubes on that is when the, once it gets here to Earth, like I say, we are in. When I mean uh, rabbit hole, ladies and gentlemen, folks, it's basically we are just at the perfect distance because when you look at Mars and so forth and so on, we know that we've seen it get flared lately. Yeah, it's probably been scorched pretty damn good. Uh, we've seen uh, Venus and Jupiter this year squirt off, and basically Venus has uh, moons that have volcanoes on it, i.e. we don't have that for sure because we haven't seen the shots, okay? And yes, we are basically at the closest distance right now that we've ever been to the sun. You see that? Nearest distance from orbit center on the sun ever has been 91402205. Okay, so when you start getting into the decimals, folks, basically we are flat out at almost zeros. Okay, so mileage wise, 91.47 million miles, and then I can go down and we can compute that up and see the mileage on that, and basically. You don't even have to compute it because you see the mileage. So right now, we are at our all-time recorded closeness to the sun in all-time history. And something like this should basically be flipping viral. Yes, it should. Okay? So it looks like we are about 91.4. We are 0 0.07 off. Okay? Nine four seven. So we just got a little bit more to go. So sorry about getting excited there, but we are damn close. And basically, this could be off, and we might be right there at right now, or we're going to get there. And if we don't get there, then okay, that's good because that's as close as we've ever got before, and we're doing better this time. So cruising through Lasco two real fast. We basically just plop through here, and we will take a look of what is more than likely. Stop some flare of the sun, okay? Because darkness means there's something there blocking that radiance of the sun, okay? Otherwise, everything's looking real cool. And remember that this is behind, so this is the satellite that when you are looking at the sun during the daytime hours, wherever you're at on Earth, that the uh, satellite to the left is behind. It's the B, okay? And that would be the shots that you get from C to and also from C3, okay, from Navy, okay, just a little bit different angles, okay, reflection angles, okay, mirrors, I mean, hell, they put this shit on TV, on an advertiser, for Christ's sakes, okay, we got the remnant there, by the sun, so let's go ahead and go to three, here we are at three, and then we'll pop in and maybe we'll take a look at H1 and so forth, and then basically, as you can see, that when a jet stream of light is coming off, it's coming into a planet of some sorts, Right there. Remember, we know that these are all layers, but the Navy does show us the most because basically you can actually tell and know that there's something going on there. And we will plop into, and if anything, that possibly should be, I believe, uh, Mercury there. Not even worry about going to the map today. Everybody can always go, well, boom, let's go. And you can go ahead and look at Beacon or whatever and see what that is. And then more than likely our remnant again right there. Okay, so let's plop this up and zoom in. But then again, also, what we're seeing for size right there, there's a good chance that that's probably not Mercury right there, okay? Too damn big, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And then we come up and we look at basically what we were seeing, because we know that it's hitting something, and basically look up there at a 1,000, you can see that there's even a planet up higher, because you can't miss it. You can see it right there. You can see something, okay? And whatever, everybody can say whatever smart-ass comment they want, if you got a silhouette like that and it's dark and it's in a round right there, we've already proven that we know that our lies, eyes don't lie to us. And actually, it looks like there could be two right there. Okay, and then you go down a little lower, and you got something blocking out 
the stretching of the CME in action and so forth. And yes, we know that we get a ball of CME out there, but that's usually because when it flares, it's usually flaring because there's something close to the sun and it flares at it. Just like Jupiter and Venus has both shown us when something gets close, they usually have some kind of, well, a lot of people usually jump and say the word plasma. I don't know what it is, you know, I mean, basically we know that it's fake blood on here on Earth and then the plasma's got a lot of different plasma TV and everybody jump, jumps on a word while well, it's popular so use it, you know. So basically we know that it is a CME, we are reactive flare because we've proven that it's not a damn lens flare so you can see that there's something that the sun has given a shot to there there's some object there so let's go to beacon take a look over there pop down to I'll give you a hundred percent here real fast and you'll see that that's what you were looking at let's pop to 400 real fast and then take a little sm smaller look I mean a, you know a little bit more farther out look but you can pretty much see that there's stuff there to get hit and there's more than likely some stuff way up there because you start getting darkness and you don't get the light that you see down here from the sun and yes, folks, the sun all the way around. And when you see that combined temperature, let's go back to the sun temperature again real fast. And as you've seen earlier, it's only 5,780K. Okay, So actually, the sun temperature is doing pretty good right now. But honestly, I think that they're going to get a lot of throw off from the other planets. As you go to the other one, and we showed you that basically there's a combined temperature of something like 57K, I think we had. 57,000K. Okay. So there's a lot of shared temperature there, and I think a lot of any thermometers up there are really going to get thrown off by other objects, okay? But they can, we've got a pretty damn good of getting right in on that one mass of the sun, okay? Because they do it with a laser, but you're going to have so much heat that's so close to from those other supergiants around there right now that you're not really going to know. And duh, there you go. Sun's in the supergiants currently, pretty much right there where I've been pointing at and telling you it's probably more than likely at, okay? And we know you've seen other suns out here. Check back my old videos, folks. It's all, and we will get a hell of a lot of solar weather out of what we're getting lately because we have alignment up there with everything from Neptune uh, and all, everything like that. We show you, and then basically, like I've been saying, the speed of this thing coming by is going to have some dramatic effects down here. Okay, first February. Okay, and then there's also some stuff the 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th too. If you start getting on JPL and start looking around there, I believe I haven't looked there for a long time because it's a ways out. So. Just contend with what's around here now, and then uh, you get dramatic from the idea that that fast all the way uh, to this. So you know that we've been getting an earthquake action lately, and everything has a lot been up. With, and we just had a bunch of stuff over in the United States today, of up in uh, Utah, and also there was, I believe, what did we have? I'm trying to remember the other state that was showing earlier, but let's go to USGS and. Anybody up in Alaska, they know that basically they keep constantly unsteadiness. Alaska's been getting it for a long time. But I was trying to think about what the heck was it. Yeah, Western Montana has got 3.4. Utah got one too recently. So it's not listed on here. It was actually at USGS. Let me just go to it real fast and you'll see it. When you pop up, I know it'll probably blurry out here, but I'll just save time and there you go. That was in Utah today. Okay? So, and then you had straight across there. So basically, sun, supergiant rays, in combination of the sun and the supergiants, and I just showed you all that combined temperature of 57,000 plus K, okay? And not to not even forget about the idea that the sun is only 5,700 K itself, okay? And if you watch all your rise and sets on your main planets, and basically you see all the alignment that we're in, it's going to be real low. As you know, the equator would normally be right here. And actually, I might even be wrong with that with as much axis tilt that we've got to actually, yes, you can see it to the left. Okay? And then the idea factually that where that sits at now, with a lot on that loop, very low because the sun always travels right along this line, ladies and gentlemen. And that's your equator. Okay? Normally, up here. Okay, so let's go down here and you'll see rises and set times are basically over there, p.m. and a.m. You should be able to see a little bit to the right. And you're going to have a lot of action in the early UTC Zulu time uh, over basically UTC Zulu 3 or 4 in the morning. There's going to be a lot of activity and Mercury has showed us some pretty good action this morning with its rise. Take you up to the rise on it and so forth. And 
you'll get a lot of action out of that because you're going to have your next rises, okay? Next rises are those, okay? So let's also take a look at 57 out there. M57, very large. And M57 is a mass ring nebula, okay? But there's huge planets in it, and basically the average radius of the nebula is 6 trillion miles. Yeah, it's huge, okay? A lot of magnetic old pull, though, from there. A lot of different places in space, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, what's that look like? Mm -hmm. See, what the secrets hold, ladies and gentlemen, is, and what the secrets hold, and who holds them, astronomers and, and astrologers, and yes, they communicate a lot, okay? Because this is 1.1 size of the sun, and it's in the supergiants, so it's just a little bit bigger than the sun. So, and we've already proven that there's tons of suns in the supergiants, and we knew that the sun was over here pretty much right now, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at, and this is one that's very interesting and basically I think that drove a lot of their attention and I think that really they have found a planet that's over here in the coolness because we are Earth out and below like probably either low or high here somewhere following the sun around here. There possibly is a, a rabbit hole planet like Earth somewhere around this sun because of the size of the heat it puts off and the idea as you can see by looking at the supergiant's fork that there's plenty of area for a planet to survive. If it could go circular around at 365 or whatever days that it does go around or more than one planet and get through all this or stay below all this or above all that action and stuff in the supergiants main sequence, okay? That's why we are a safe ways away from the sun here either the hell out here or are they lying to us and we're actually below or above or in we shouldn't be we should be out this way in front of the sun okay this is basically a view from earth towards the supergiants main sequence and the supergiants i.e. like i've showed you in the soho pictures so dramatically we can figure out a real good position if we figure out what planet this is we'll go to where on beacon because you see you get a sun flare so you see a height of what that planet and we'll know in a second what planet that should be because this was, I believe, that's a headshot. Yep, no, behind. Okay, H12, and then it heads on the left. So we'll see a behind. We'll take a look at B on Soho and see where the hell it's located at, okay? Because you can see the solar flare. So we get a good idea of height, ladies and gentlemen. And I would think that this might be a shot back towards Earth again, and you end up seeing Pleiades there, I th would think, possibly. Either that or that's the sun and they're taking another shot without having the box covering up the sun, as you see a flare there. And also this on a head, so we'll go see what that object is also. Okay, so that's on a head today. Okay, so on a head, that's Mercury we're seeing over there. And good chance Mercury might actually have a nice little scorch to it again, and especially as you've seen that flare. So that was a head, and that's what I think what we've seen. That should be Venus on B, the behind shot, okay? So we will go back, and basically, so you can see that that's Earth down there. And a real good shot of the remnant today, also, and we might have a real sexy shot of Mercury right there on the right. We'll have to take a look. If anybody really knows where that one remnant, but it's not the remnant we normally see, the one that we get the x-ray shots of, that's the one that we basically know that it's almost like a real miniature sun there that actually like has a volcano on it or something. It keeps blowing all the time. Uh, you know, mixed up on that if it's that or that. So that should be Mercury again. Let's take a look, good close look at it. Yesterday's shot or today's shot, the twentieth. So no matter what, folks, people pull you full of shit. You can't live on Mercury, as you can see, and we know the flares go out even longer than that. Boom. So you know that Mercury gets toasted, no matter what they try to fill you full of crap of. Okay. Hello. Yep. We've seen it, and we've also seen Venus give us and all these planets give a large CME reactive flare off of their own atmosphere, whatever it might be, because we don't know if NASA really tells us the correct atmospheres or not. Titan, ladies and gentlemen, is the big secret. Saturn, and the moons around Saturn, okay? okay in a second, I'll plop this down to 400%, but as you see, we get a nice positioning, and you can almost see the sun or whatever. That's Jupiter, okay, the biggest, and then looking to the left here, size-wise, that's either a planet getting blasted by the sun, i.e. the sun gets blocked out there, and you get a good position of where Jupiter is.